Well, hello and welcome back to The Daily Brew, the devotional where every day we drink a new brew of coffee and we see what God is brewing for us in the Bible. Yes, it's cheesy, but it's true. I'm so glad you're with me for day 57 here in Auckland, New Zealand, and I'm excited to keep going on this journey with you. Let's have a look at our scriptures for today. They are, as always, in the descriptions on every platform, but I'll read them to you as well. Psalm 26, 1 to 12, Mark 9, 2 to 32, Exodus 39, 1 to 40 verse 30. So those are our scriptures for today. You can check those out on every description uh, in every platform. Okay, today though we are getting into our brews and we're going to have the last of our Carajos original beans. Uh, If you've been doing this journey with me the whole time you will have known we've done this as a espresso and as a filter and today I thought I'd do it as a plunger. plunger. Now with the plunger I've been using uh, my friends at Butt First Coffee uh, in dot nz for their plunger brew guide and to make a three cup which is what i've made i've used 23 grams of coffee and i've used 340 mils of water brew time about five minutes so that's what they reckon is going to get the best content out of the the plunger it's what i've used the last couple of times and so uh i think if you can remember back uh i think i enjoyed the uh, it as an espresso i think i've been enjoying the espressos uh, over overall, to be honest, uh, but I'm keen to see. Remember, the plunger is the mid range of the the flavor and the weight profile in the mouth. So let's see what this tastes like today. Again, no tasting notes, but it's them since 1982. So let's give it a go. Wow. As a plunger, as a plunger, yeah, I do enjoy this. Uh, as a Filter coffee, it's not great. It's not nice as a filter. It's not, it's not that it's not great. It's just there's not a lot of weight in the flavor as a filter. But as a plunger, this is this is definitely enjoyable. I'd have this as a plunger or an espresso all day. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah, that's lovely. That's a lovely base. That's awesome. There's no uh, extreme flavor profiles that I'm getting out of it, but it, it's it's a nice taste and a nice feeling in your mouth when you're drinking it so it's a good coffee i'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna recommend this to you give this a try if you're if you're a regular plunger drinker obviously i buy the beans but i think they've also got them in plunger pre-ground plunger as well so uh you can check it out in supermarkets or online but that's it for the brews for today let's get into the bible the reason we are here I remember taking a leadership session at an intermediate school a wee while ago and intermediates here in new zealand are pre-teens so ages 10 to 12 and the question that we asked them was, well, what are your dreams, ambitions, and goals for your life? Give me what where you want to be in the next 30 years. So by the time you're 40, what do you want? And so we gave the kids a few minutes to sit down and write down all of these things, all of these dreams, all of these ambitions. And we gave the kids, yeah, time to consider where they wanted to be and what they wanted in their life. And the results after a few minutes were outstanding. Like, quite confronting. The top results were fame, money, status, retirement, travel, social media, and status. Yes, status. It's funny that from a young age, and granted younger and younger now as uh, social media continues to p- uh, pioneer new ground, as TV and and and, and technology continues to be uh, on the forefront of the minds of these young people, it's interesting that from a young age that fame, money, and status is what people chase. Social commentators have actually called it the cult of celebrity. And the truth is, is that if this is your pursuit in life, this is not a satisfying pursuit. These pursuits pale in the comparison to the glory that the Bible describes as the manifestation of God's presence to be. Glory is a word that gets used more often than other words in the Bible, but it doesn't mean what we think it might mean especially when you filter it through the lens of our culture. We think it's praise, fame, or celebration. And it's, but glory in the Bible is better known as importance, reputation, majesty, and honor. And it shouldn't surprise us that as humanity drifts away from worshiping the glory of God and the, uh, and the worship of celebrity and fame increase, that it's worship of self that increases. So as we drift away from worshiping the glory of God, as that becomes less, the increase then becomes on the celebrity and of the fame and of the influence. And that in and of itself is the worship of self. As Christians, we're not called to worship self though. 
we're called to worship God in all his glory and then reflect that glory to the world around us. If we are going to worship God in all his glory, and then we need to seek his glory. How do you feel about God's house? David wrote, Lord, I love the house where you live, the place where your glory dwells. This is a significant statement from David in the context of who he is, right? Remember, after killing Goliath, becoming king and seeing such victory in war. He himself was a celebrity. They sang songs about him. But David never sought his own glory. Instead, he loved the place where God's glory dwelt. He was intent on making sure that God got the glory and not him. One thing that's interesting to me, though, is in verse 11, David says, I lead a blameless life. But then he goes on to say, deliver me and be merciful to me. So what the heck is he needing deliverance from if he's lived a blameless life? Have you ever read that and thought that to yourself? The truth is, is that he was intent, his intent, sorry, was to live a blameless and sinless life. But we know, however, that he didn't, that he was aware of that need for himself and he needed God's redemption and mercy. That's the tension we live as Christians. We want to live a blameless life, but we, we, we can't. We can't. We need Jesus. And this is, the, this, is the, this is the heart that God's looking for. It's a heart of integrity, a heart to say, I, this is what I desire, but I know I need you. It's this life of integrity that allows us to have a sincere and wholehearted heart towards God. God's house is where the glory dwells. It's the temple in the Old Testament, and it's the church, the bride of Christ, in the new. But the church is not an organization. It's not a place of culture or a cultural hub. It's not, a, it's not even a business. It's the people. It's the people that make the church what the church is. And you and I are the temple where God's glory can dwell. We are the temples of the Holy Spirit. So we need to make sure that our lives are lived with integrity and humility so that we can see the glory of God reflected in and through our lives. When we come in contact with the glory of God, something should change within us. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to convict and challenge us so that we can reflect His glory here on earth. Jesus meets with Moses and Elijah. Remember, as the fulfillment of the law and prophets he meets with Moses and Elijah. We talked about that a little while ago. And he glows brightly. God is described as light or brightness. When you or I as humans come into contact with the light of heaven, we need to reflect that light into the world around us. The truth is about our celebrity and fame culture is that they live a life of luxury. But for Jesus, throughout his life, suffering and glory went hand in hand. In verse 12, Jesus says, The Son of Man must suffer much and be rejected. Jesus was saying here that he, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, must suffer and be rejected so that the glory of God can flood the earth. This glory, this sacrifice is hard, but it must be made if we're going to be people who reflect God's glory. Jesus reminds his disciples that the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him, and after three days, he will rise, suffering and glory. Have you ever been in a church service before where the tangible presence of God was so thick and undeniable that the glory of God is really in the room? One Friday night after the preteens ministry I was running, we had a kid who was just crying there, crying in tears after everybody had left. I thought I was about to lose my job or something because, you know, maybe I injured him, maybe I hurt him. You know, never a good sign when kids are crying. I talked to him, though, and, and as he looked up, with me with, looked up at me with tears in his eyes, he said, these are happy tears. I saw an angel during worship and he came in through those doors. He pointed at the, a set of doors and he worshiped with us. This kid had a glimpse of God's glory. It brought him to tears and kept him in awe for over 30 minutes. Imagine what it would have been like for the Old Testament people, the Israelites, right? Being able to enter the temple and get a sight, a glimpse of God's concentrated glory. They had seen the glory of God through many miracles, but now with Moses, they could experience the tangible presence of God in and amongst them. The Bible describes the glory of God as settling in the temple. And in Hebrew, this word settling is, is, is a Shekinah. It's Shekinah. That's the word. It's something used to describe to describe, sorry, a particularly powerful or tangible sense of the presence and glory of God. Friend, we have access to this glory in an even greater way than the people of the Old Testament did. The temple curtain was torn in two, and now we have full access because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. And whether it's a cloud by day or fire by night, God's glory can and will settle on you, on your situation and in your life. Three. Verse of the day. Mark 9 23 is the verse of the day. It says this, everything is possible for those who believe. The disciples who didn't go up the mountain tried to heal a boy with an evil spirit, but they didn't have the faith to see it happen. 
the world we live in disqualifies faith. It says fact and visibility gives things validity. Seeing is believing. But I want to encourage us as Christians, believing is seeing. And if you believe wholeheartedly, everything is possible for you. Well, that is it for today, the Daily Brew done and dusted day 27. Thank you so much for joining me today. I pray God is speaking to you through the scriptures. Hey, I don't have my Bible with me today. I wonder where I put that. Oh, it's over there. I'll keep my Bible for tomorrow and uh, that'll be good. But I am praying for you. I pray that God is speaking to you through these scriptures and that you are enjoying this journey as much as I am. If you're on our audio podcast platforms, please take a moment now to follow and rate the podcast. And if you're on YouTube, subscribe and click the bell so you never miss a devotional journey. Hey, I want to encourage you to keep on going. Day 58 is tomorrow. Uh, and I cannot wait to see you back here on The Daily Brew. If it's the start of, your, uh, of a new day, have a great rest of your day and let's sleep time. Good night, sleep tight, and we'll see you tomorrow back here for The Daily Brew.